So the other day I made a video about some cryptos that I thought would be potential Ethereum killers. Uh, however, I did fail to mention a couple of different cryptos. Obviously there's a whole bunch of them, uh, but one of them being Avalanche, or the token is actually, uh, well the coin is actually AVAX. Uh, but today I thought, you know, it snowed a little bit, so let me go ahead and uh, seem like a perfect time to talk about it. The Avalanche architecture is going to be the entire protocol as a whole, so keep that in mind. Now. Within the Avalanche architecture, there are, they have two consensus methods. Uh, consensus method is like proof of work, proof of stake, you know, uh, pretty much a way for the blockchain to, to reach consensus. Uh, in this case, they have one called Snowman, one called Snowman, <laughs> and one called Avalanche. Uh, and already I'm sure it's going to get a little bit tricky there, right? So keep that in mind. We're talking about the avalanche architecture as a whole, and within that, there are two consensus methods. There's Snowman and there are Avalanche. Snowman is chain optimized, totally ordered, uh, and pretty much perfect for smart contracts, while Avalanche is DAG optimized, parallel, parallelizable, par parallelizable, uh, and simple to prune. Uh, so, you know, simple to pick apart and choose. Now, you heard me say a couple of different words there, uh, one of them being DAG. DAG stands for Directable Acyclic Graph, uh, and yeah, probably doesn't make too much sense to you at this point. Uh, however, think of it as the successor to blockchain technology, pretty much like a step above blockchain. So yeah, it's, it gets pretty intricate, as I said. <laughs> and remember, those are the two consensus methods. Now right below those two consensus methods, there are three different chains. There's a platform chain, there's the exchange chain, and there's a contracts chain. And I'll break them down individually one by one. Starting off with the platform chain, the platform chain itself coordinates validators, it creates new subnets, and it keeps track of all the subnets within it. Uh, and I think I just said, uh, it uses the snowman consensus method. So I just can sit a whole bunch of stuff there. Uh, pretty much think of the platform chain as the, the hub for subnets. And a subnet is just a whole set of validators. So you know how people are mining Bitcoin, people are mining different cryptocurrencies. Each person that mines a cryptocurrency is a validator and a subnet is just a group of validators. So the platform chain essentially manages all those validators together, uh, again, into subnets. Next up, we have the exchange chain. This one uses the avalanche uh, consensus method and it allows for the creation of new assets, uh, tokens in this case, uh, exchanging between assets, so token to token transfers, uh, and cross subnet transfers as well. So again, you hear that word subnet come across again here, uh, but mainly you can just see the exchange chain as the transferring of assets mainly. You know, just how you can send Bitcoin to someone else, they can send it back to you. Uh, it's somewhat similar, uh, especially since you can build tokens on top of Avalanche, uh, being why it's kind of a competitor to Ethereum as well. And then lastly, we have the contracts chain. Now, this is also going to be using that snowman consensus method. Uh, and in this case, it's really made just for, you know, making smart contracts, much like you would in Ethereum, where you have NFTs, you have decentralized applications, uh, you have pretty much anything from what I understand you can do on Ethereum, you can do on this one. And what they note on their website, and that I'll put up here as well, is that the, these smart contracts that you can make on Avalanche are also compatible with Ethereum smart contracts. So uh, it seems like they're you're able to kind of shift one over to the other. Uh, and that kind of brings me to my final point here, uh, that everything ties back to Ethereum. <laughs> That's why I will always say that there is no Ethereum killer, because uh, it's pretty much trying to say like, uh, I would say David versus Goliath, but I think David killed Goliath. It's like, tr it's like trying to take down something that's bigger than life at this point. Ethereum is huge, it has, it has all the marketing, it has all the uh, applications, it has, it has all the developers. Even if you need you require a new language like Solidity to actually code on Ethereum, uh, which can be kind of a, uh, you know, a stopping block for a lot of people, uh, it still seems to be just kicking ahead, especially in this bull market that we're currently in. Uh, so in general, uh, that's kind of how Avalanche works as a, uh, you know, as a whole ecosystem. There's a whole bunch more we can go into depth on, but I just wanted to give a high level overview. Uh, do I think Avalanche is going to be an Ethereum killer? Again, I don't think so. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm sure Avalanche has a lot of potential, but you need to think of it, think of it in the way as a company would, right? You have Avalanche who has just started out. Yes, they have more ways of, you know, optimizing their smart contracts and making token transfers, 
that are uh, a lot more friendly to regulators because you can customize them uh, to make sure that they meet regulatory uh, you know, uh, standards. Uh, however, it hasn't been around long enough. It doesn't have the adoption. It doesn't have the user base that Ethereum already has. And that's the same scenario with a lot of these new smart contracts or I mean uh, new tokens or coins coming out that they're great. And a lot of them have faster and better architecture than Ethereum. Uh, however, they just don't have, you know, the, the pretty much the base, like, you know, the user base to back it. <laughs> and that's a mention. If you're the head of a multi-million billion dollar company, would you, what would you rather trust? A uh, blockchain that's been around since 2016 for four years that has proven time and time again to actually work, even though it is slow, uh, over a blockchain that was just made this year, uh, or, or maybe even last year, uh, and doesn't really have any other people on it either. You know, in terms of cost to reward, Ethereum is probably gonna be the best way to go for a lot of these different companies. Uh, however, I do wish Avalanche the best of luck. If you're an investor in Avalanche, and you as well. Uh, it seems like these guys have a lot of shit going for them. Uh, and it's really cool how they have break all these all these things down. Blockchain is no longer just one main chain uh, and everything built on top of it. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyways, um, I'll try to get out of here before uh, Avalanche comes down and gets me. Uh, you know, yeah.